This video is brought to you by Vessi. Xavier Renegade Angel was one of the most hated shows on Adult Swim for its abrasive pacing, chaotic stories, and absurd humor, and all presented via janky computer animation. For high school me at the time, I despised the show and thought it was stupid. From its writing to its visuals, I saw this show as the pinnacle of Adult Swim absurdism to a very unsatisfying degree. Now, the block itself was no stranger to surreal and absurd humor, as can obviously be seen in its programming, but Xavier was a step too far, and I was not alone in that sentiment. Most of my friends around 2007 dismissed Xavier and stuck to Family Guy, Robot Chicken, and The Boondocks instead. How could we enjoy a show that was so unapologetically crass and unappealing? Spit it out, you animal! <laughs> well, nearly 15 years have gone by since it premiered, and I decided to double back on Xavier to see if I missed anything. My taste buds have changed quite a bit since I was a kid, so maybe I was a bit too harsh on Xavier, the same way I was too harsh on Moral Oral. After binging all 20 episodes in a day, I think it's safe to say that Xavier was a bit of a trailblazer. And folks, I think I get it. Processing. 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 Now, I know I am far from the first person to make this observation, but Xavier's comedic writing and pacing is kind of in line with some genres of internet humor of today. Ever heard of 21st century memes? Yeah, <laughs> Xavier reminds me of that. Just a random, unrelenting montage of edits that have no rhyme or reason. Next up, season it, okay? Black Pepper be like. Black Pepper be like. Bruh, 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 bruh. Xavier walked so 21st century memes could run. Though I know said kind of humor is an acquired taste, and the very same can be said about Xavier. Which is why, in my opinion, it was so repulsive to a majority of people during the late 2000s. But just like a fine wine, or saliva, Xavier can now be appreciated by viewers of that comedic persuasion. I forgive you. You can put me to death, but you can't put me to life. For we are all brothers, 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 brothers. What? Look at Just brothers, hit the switch, brothers, Rodney. Brothers, you weren't supposed to say my name. I'm wearing the hood. You promise. Xavier was created by Vernon Chapman and John Lee, who also wrote for the show along with Alice and Levy. They also did the voices, too. Vernon and John have a reputation for doing some really off-the-wall stuff with their creations via PFFR, which is their production company. They did a show back in the day on MTV called Wonder Chosen, which was, um, was really something. Don't use any of that stuff, Ricky. It will make you very upset. Thinking critically, how do I know what you say is true? Well, it's, you should, I'll prove it to you. <laughs> In an interview with AV Club back in 2009, John mentioned that Xavier was pitched to Comedy Central and that it was supposed to be live action and that the head of Comedy Central thought that John and Vernon were deliberately wasting his time or at least according to like the interview here, which is like itself seems to be sprinkled with the occasional bits of information and like maybe truths. But John and Vernon are definitely messing around and are very aloof. It's a comedic tone where they're just like, ah, we don't give a damn. Though there was a moment where Vernon said Xavier was a warning to children and adults about the dangers of spirituality, which, if sincere, I'm inclined to believe with how unapologetically chaotic and destructive Xavier can be. The show itself follows the titular character of Xavier, a spirit guide of some humanoid species. He has brown fur, multiple nipples, a snake as one of his limbs, and walks like an elite from Halo. He's earnest in his quest to use his spiritual teachings to help other people, along with tackling the eternal question of what doth life? What doth life, life, life stay? Hey, bungho, cease that inner yapping. There's also something about uh, Xavier's parents and how he's trying to find out who killed his father and then finding his mother. 
Now on paper, those plot points sound simple and linear, but that could not be further from the truth. This happy place holds magic meaning for two. My mother's nickname, truckers, delivery guys, men coming in and out of the house all day, called her the Grand Canyon. After watching more oral months ago and seeing it in a new light, I thought the same would happen for Xavier. But yeah, that was only like half the case. The show can be funny at times, and I even laughed out loud at moments. It definitely has that awake after your bedtime, feels like your head is getting dizzy vibe to it, that like most Adult Swim shows sported. Though Xavier took that to the nth degree. It's wild that something like Super Jail can seem narratively linear by comparison. From his accent to his cadence, Xavier has a very unique way of talking that is purposely exaggerated, like weird inflections and misuse of words and uh, a staccato rhythm that definitely makes Xavier stand out as a character. Let me see it. See with your eyes, not with your mouth. I'll call your bluff. I'll see your penis with your mouth, and I raise you with my hand. Anti up. Oh, damn it. What's wrong? I crapped out, but I'm tough. I can suck it up. Also, uh, he never shuts up. Like, just, just a never-ending, constant stream of nonsensical dialogue, like water gushing from a broken faucet. <laughs> it's actually quite remarkable. Uh, there was someone in my Twitter replies who said that, like, Xavier sounds like a corrupt AI program trying to write for a character. But honestly, uh, this level of insanity can only truly be achieved by human madness. If I ever get your stinky mug in my line of sight, I swear to Chekhov, I'll cock your clock off. Well, I'm going to be the bigger man and hang up first. Damn it. I also love how these show will just use the same recordings over and over again, which for me, who edits audio uh, for his job, I find that pretty funny. I'm looking for a painting on the cave walls. Have you seen it? It looks like this. Yeah, you just make painting. Ooga booga. Now, as far as the visuals go, the style is super economical, which like makes sense since basically everything William Street produced was made for pennies on the dollar. The show looks like a PlayStation 2 game and employs a lot of the same techniques that the console did to imply detail. Most detailing on the models are like all implied in the texture work instead of directly modeled. Characters' clothing is painted directly on the surface of the geometry, as well as like Xavier's fur. Lighting is incredibly basic and sometimes like completely omitted. There's no clothes physics, so like sleeves on shirts and stuff are completely static. And also, the poly counts are incredibly low as well. Pause a frame, and you can usually count the amount of points that make up the loop on a sleeve of a character's shirt by hand. Now to do 3D like this at the time with a limited budget, and most likely limited technology, especially in 2007, going this path for Xavier was pretty much the only way to get it done. Xavier actually reminds me a lot of Pompey the Performer in that regard. According to John and Vernon, quote, the CG just has this clumsy earnestness about it. It's totally ambitious and totally limited. So when it fails, it fails in a really lame way, end quote. The show just embraces its visual shortcomings with constant clipping and glitches and frame rate drops and just visual errors across the board. And guess what? It works. I think high school me at the time compared Xavier to Pixar. And I was like, oh, this is ugly. I hate it. Look how low quality it is. But like now, after developing my palette, I get the irony and humor from the deliberate janky animation of Xavier. If anything, the jankiness of it all just adds to the atmosphere, and the further we move forward technologically, iconically, the more jank aesthetic will even further reinforce the bizarre atmosphere the show instills. Ever since you said you loved me, things have gotten really weird around here. I'll handle this. You think you can make it on your own? I'd like to see you die. I hate you. I got this completely under control. Little lady, as long as you live under my ballet studio that we just broke into, you live under my now, Xavier isn't a stranger when it comes to tackling mature and controversial subject matters, especially sizing up religion, spiritualism, and belief. 
In a way, it feels a bit like the first season of Moral Oral, where the subject matter is a bit more crass and surface in its critique of the subject matter, with both shows taking on faith. The Moral Oral had far more focus in its commentary on a singular belief system, whereas Xavier takes a more holistic approach. It pokes at the concept from multiple perspectives in a more general sense, implying instead of directly attacking. You know, it's funny how both Oral and Xavier are unwittingly causing more problems than they're solving, despite having their best intentions as a result of their belief system. That being said, Mora Oral used its crass first season to help set up a strong foundation for examining the characters of Moralton and digging a lot deeper in its critique later on. For Xavier, though, the show doesn't really get more introspective on its subject matter, with no real recurring characters in a far less grounded world than Mora Oral. The structure for examining these elements in a slower, serialized, more personal matter isn't there like it was for Moral. The show feels like it's not so much a warning to its audience about spirituality, like the creators allegedly imply, but more of just poking fun by dialing up the literalism and absurdity of the concepts to Eleven. It doesn't feel like Xavier has all that much to say other than, spiritualism dumb, now laugh at man and loincloth. Now when Oral was operating at that level, I didn't find much to appreciate there either. The bit gets old fast. Sure, each episode presents a new framing device, but it's always the same meta-textual punchline. Unless you start actually digging deeper into what you're attempting to deconstruct, the gag loses its impact rather quickly. Add to the fact that Xavier doesn't commit to the bit and call out specific real-world practices by name, said surface-level prodding loses a bit of its bite. By the end of the series, I was honestly getting tired of it. Like, I did appreciate how creative it was, and I also appreciate episode 9 of season 2 with its broad range of visual mediums and fan submissions. But I was being overwhelmed with style over substance. I said fan submissions, I'm pretty sure that was the case. There's something about like a dog eating ketchup in a bowl, and like, I'm pretty sure some folks sent in like, here's my footage. I, <laughs> there's a behind the scenes for it, but it was uh, interesting to say the least. And if Xavier isn't really saying anything of substance, it becomes a lot harder to hand wave away the use of controversial subject matter like racist caricature, homophobia, ableism, and other low such hanging fruit as anything other than shock comedy, which makes their inclusion far less palatable. Xavier definitely feels much more trapped as a product of its time than a moral oral embodying that absurdist, no-filter black comedy that epitomized late 2000s Adult Swim. Yeah, there are some really entertaining and even hilarious moments in Xavier that I feel only Xavier as a show could facilitate, but after a while, it got exhausting. Though maybe that is on me for binging something as unbridled as Xavier in one go. I will say this though, the arson play on words joke made me cry from laughter. That was a good one. Who did this to you guys? Our son. I know it was arson, Dad. In conclusion, Xavier is undoubtedly a very unique show that Team Me was very critical of. As an adult, I have reached a perspective that is far more understanding of its absurd, surreal humor. Again, this show was doing 21st century humor before it even became a thing. I can also see the appeal and humor in the animation for the show. And I genuinely find its animation errors to be hilarious, especially the ragdoll effects. Then I need to get a human virus to infecticide the computer. That being said, I think I might have overestimated my second viewing of the show. I thought it might be a sleeper hit like Moral Oral, another show I despised when it first aired. But for Xavier, I thought it was just overall okay. Where Oral would grab you and shove your face into the depths of what spiritualism and blind faith can do to both individuals and entire communities, and force you to meditate on its uncomfortable conclusions, Xavier just kind of winks at you slyly before a snake arm comically eats six babies just because you aren't supposed to do that on TV. Hey, perhaps that is all it was ever meant to be. Just shocking and funny and my expectations were incorrectly set coming into the show. While humor is subjective, if you were in the tone of Adult Swim in its heyday, you will find a lot of absurdity to appreciate here. 
even if at the expense of substance. <laughs> Maybe if you're lucky, you can make a gorilla friend to watch the show with and discover what doth life. This gorilla is going places. <laughs> I want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Vessi. Check it out, guys. I got me a new pair of shoes. The boardwalk slip on in black and God, I love how convenient these shoes are. I recently went on a flight and these were the perfect shoe to go with. Just an absolute breeze, the TSA. Where I don't have to like stop and like unlace my shoes, carry all my bags, put them back on awkwardly afterwards. Nope, none of that. Just right through the TSA. They looked at my shoes and said, hey, you look pretty cool, come on through. They actually did not say that. But taking my shoes off was easy enough. They're comfortable, lightweight, breathable, and look stylish as hell. Not to mention that Vessies are 100% waterproof. Walking through that puddle, hey, no worries, no problem. Vessies are made from Dymatex, which is a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. So I highly recommend Vessies. They're my go-to shoes by the door, and I wear them every day. Take advantage of the Vessies Memorial Day Sale and save up to 30% on a variety of Vessi styles. Available at Vessi.com slash Saberspark. And in case you missed the sale, you can still enjoy a 15% discount on your order by using code Saberspark at checkout. Don't wait too long to grab your favorite Vessi shoes. Go hit them up today.